welcome to the fourth session of the third level and i assume that you have seen all the previous videos and understood every bit of it previously i was discussing about the author the summary the background theme and everything today i will start with the fourth part obviously and i'll continue with the explanation of the paraphrasing so the last class when i ended i told you that these uh, I mean the protagonist of the story that's Charlie he landed up on the third level and when he did so he saw there were varied people but they all looked very different and why was that they were all wearing three piece suit with a weird sort of hat and then on top of it they had heavy beards and even mustaches which he had not seen for ages so that's when he decided or thought or assumed we can say that he was in a different era So just to clarify, he peeped in somewhere. Let's find out where. Please pay attention. The corridor I was in began angling left and slanting downwards, and I thought that was wrong. But I kept on walking. All I could hear was the empty sound of my own footsteps, and I didn't pass a soul. Then I heard that sort of hollow uh, roar ahead. that means open space and people talking the tunnel turned sharp left i went down a short flight of stairs and came out on the third level at grand central station for just a moment i thought i was back on the second level but i saw the room was smaller there were fewer ticket windows and train gates and the information booth in the center was wood and old looking and the man in the booth wore a green eye shade and long black sleeve protectors the lights were dim and sort of i saw why and they were open flame gas lights so as i said after he came in this uh, third level he saw the people around and even the ambience was totally different it reminded him of the pre medieval times so he looked around he saw the gas lights were all flickering and he also noticed that uh, the people were as i have mentioned it before they were all in a very different uh, dress and attire and on top of it uh, he saw that there were only two ticketing booths wherein a uh, man who was sitting there was wearing one uh, kind of a suit and even an eye shade and uh, he was just trying to grasp and observe his surroundings on the floor and across the station a glint of light caught my eye glint is obviously a ray of light or you can say uh, when light falls in one direction to you a uh, man was pulling a gold watch from his vest pocket do you remember those times when they had those antiquated circular gold watches where in uh, it had a chain also i must have seen in the movies and stuff So they were all old style of having watches, not on the hand, but in their pocket with a chain. So then that man took it out from his pocket. He snapped open the cover, glanced at his watch, and frowned. So then that man took out the watch, saw the time, and then he frowned. He did not have a very pleasant expression. He wore a derby hat, a black four button suit with tiny. Labels. So, as I've told you, he was dressed in the outfit of a 18th century person, and he was wearing a hat with a three-piece suit along with label. Label is the type of collar which you have. This below the collar, that portion is folded. No, that is known as label. And he had big. I've mentioned it to you that uh, this uh, gentleman, that is Mr. Charlie, when he landed on the third level, he saw weird uh, dressing sense. He also saw people who wore three-piece suit and they were like you know in a very different attire and demeanor. So as I've mentioned that also, and he has never seen such kind of beard and mustaches in his life. Those handlebar mustaches. That's what I was telling you. And I would like to proceed with the text. So he wore a derby hat, a black um, button, four button suit with a label. As I've told you, it is the below the collar. It is folded below like that, and he had a big black, you know, handlebar mustache. Those big heavy mustaches he had. And then I looked around and saw that everyone in the station was dressed like 18th century, and you know, something was very weird. I never saw so many weird sideburns. and fancy mustaches 
obviously they were not the trend of these times so he has not seen such kind of you know people dressed in such kind and the hairstyle all was so different during his uh, being on the third level she wore he saw a woman walked in through the train gate she wore a dress with a with a leg of mutton sleeve and skirt to the top of her uh, leg of mutton sleeve and the shirt to the top of her high button shoes back of her out on the tracks i got a glimpse of a locomotive a very small career and is locomotive with a funnel shaped stack and then i knew so then when, while i was standing there i saw the men having a three piece suit and they were having such kind of beard and mustaches as i've told you along with that i saw a woman too who was like wearing a very different skirt and stuff not only that you must remember in hindi movies you must have seen no those steam engines with uh, coal and stuff so he too stood there and saw that old sort of a train there and he says that i noticed that locomotive i think i missed to explain the first word there were brass spittoons on the floor what is spittoon spittoon is a funnel shaped structure in which people used to spit at that point of time so they were all kept there because we those centuries had not seen dustbin and things so they were like funnel shaped containers to hold on to the garbage to make sure i walked over to a news boy and glanced at the stack of papers that is sweet stack is a pile of papers it was the world the name of the newspaper was the world and the world hasn't been published for years so the newspaper he was reading now has not been published for many years and it was quite clear that he has landed up in a different time and a different era the lead story said something about you know president cleveland all right i found that front page since in the public library and you know time flies and it was printed in june 11 1894 I turned towards the ticket windows knowing that here on the third level at Grand Central I could buy tickets that would take Louisa and me anywhere in US we wanted to go. So as uh, Charlie had a doubt that he has landed in a very different uh, uh, you know place ambience where everything was so archaic and it looked like a pre medieval time and he was not accustomed and familiar to such kind of a situation so he wanted to satisfy his quest and went to a newspaper fellow who was selling a stack a pile of newspapers so he goes and checks it out and there he finds that the heading of the newspaper was the world which has not been published for many long long years now and in that the first cover page when I mean, the article was about president cleveland and that happened to be many years ago so that convinced him that he had landed in a very different era not only that he also thought of buying tickets for himself and his wife to a different place because he wanted to go there that is avianos we have seen that in the summary and uh, he wanted to stay there happily and peacefully with his wife louis in the year 1894 i wanted two tickets to galesburg illinois have you ever been there it's a wonderful town with big old frame houses house lawns and tremendous trees whose branches meet the the overhead and roof of the streets and in 1894 summer evenings were twice as long and people sat on their lawns the men smoking cigars and talking quietly the women waving palm leaf fans with the fi fireflies all around in a peaceful world to be back there with the first world war still 20 years off and the world war two over 40 years in the future that is i wanted two tickets for that particular place author here i mean the protagonist of the story charlie says that i wanted two tickets to elinor's gales not because i'm not happy here but because their life is 
more peaceful so then he gives a description of that particular place wherein they had a weird, different type of houses there and the life over there was very you know calm serene people were not in any sort of a hurry they were contented with life women used to sit there with you know waving their uh, palm leaf fans and men were also busy farming and doing busy with agriculture and stuff like that so he also wanted to go there and be a part of their life and this city life had taken a toll on him so he wanted to enjoy the perks of enjoy the perks of the the sub urban life no away from the city life you ask any city dweller he is not happy because in this mad rush of you know following the clock people have forgotten how to live people have forgotten the essence of life so here charlie wanted to go back to that particular place gainsborough you know because uh, men were all very laid back they used to sit back and uh, smoke cigars and uh, women were busy you know using the fan and stuff they were uh, way before the world wars the world has not been horrendous and the world had not seen the two gorish wars it was like you know very peaceful serene and the world was tranquil so that was a major reason why he wanted to go back to that era and enjoy the perk so as we have seen he wanted to buy two tickets and uh, let's see what happens on the ticket window so um, he wanted to go and buy the tickets and he nodded at the bills that ain't money mr he said and you are trying to skin me you won't get very far and he glanced at the cash drawer beside him of course the money was old style bills half again as big as the money we use nowadays and different looking i turned away and got out fast there's nothing nice about jail even in 1894 and that was that so he says that when i went to the ticket counter and i wanted the money so at that point of time that man said what are you giving me are you like making fun of me or are you making a uh, fool of me what do you think i'm going to accept this because he was thinking that he's a fraud charlie is a fraud and he's trying to fool him he is trying to you know um, take advantage of him so hence he said i'm not going to take this currency it is not a valid currency because as we know that they were in 1894 and obviously the currency was different than what it was charlie was standing and busy comparing the previous currency i mean the older currency and the modern currency but he thought it is better to run away from this place because if he is uh, you know taken to jail because he was trying to forge somebody trying to you know uh, take advantage of somebody so that is not a good place in 1894 even so in order to not land himself in trouble he runs away from that mess created by him with this i conclude my session this is the fourth part which comes to an end and i request you all to please uh, be regular and follow all my sessions one after the other and uh, listen and even understand sit with your ncert text whenever i am explaining the paraphrasing so that you can connect with me properly and understand it in a better way thank you